good afternoon and student lecturer for today. And our topic for today's lecture is solid parametric problem. This is a book that we have been following. And we are on the chapter two of this book. And we have already covered three main contents, those of schematic modeling, classical models, and surface models. I will be covering solid models. So first, I will introduce you to uh, the difference between procedural model and explicit model. Uh, it is a bit simple because Swensen has already explained this slide very well. Uh, in the case of procedural model, we can uh, follow the, uh, each step and come to a point. But in the case of expi explicit model, we cannot uh, make the procedure from that model. But if we change something in an explicit model, we cannot uh, trace it to the back point. So what are the goals of solid model? First, uh, we uh, discover why we need uh, solid model. For the time being, we have been using graphical models like this, uh, a 2D picture, which uh, is understandable for humans. But we also need to have some prior knowledge of how to handle this kind of information. So it is incomplete and limited its applicability. But what we want is a complete representation of solid objects, which is not only understandable by humans, but by robots as well. But uh, in that case, there are issues like integrity of information and complexity. For example, this is a very complex model. and. Uh, a human may understand it better, but to make its understanding to a robot is very difficult. Because for a robot, you have to convey everything and every information. So what are the properties of solid models? Uh, solid models should uh, have expressive power. They convey the complete message what we want to achieve. And they are validated by their manufacturer ability, like what we have designed and what we manufactured. They should be the same. And they, uh, when these are conveyed to a robot or to a human, there should not be any ambiguous uh, information. And all the information should be unique. And uh, solid models have operations of construction, which we'll, uh, we will discuss later. And next is the storage requirement, which is not an issue today to some extent. But in old days, when the storage uh, capacity was small, there was an issue. And the last one is computational ease, like if the rendering has to be done every time, or the computer has to rebuild the model every time, then it is a use of computational power. And uh, it is not very an effective way of uh, solid modeling. So what are the modeling approaches? Uh, these are described in four uh, Subdivisions, decomposition models, constructive models, boundary models, and non-manifold models. In decomposition models, there are voxel uh, like this. Voxel rendering, uh, in voxel rendering, there is very, very small triangles. And this is a portion of a, an image. So voxel rendering is really computation exten uh, extensive. and does not produce very good results. And next is volume rendering. Volume rendering uh, is a process of visualizing a 3D object in 2D environment. And next, uh, 
next is point cloud. So it is a cluster of points which generates the image. Uh, I cannot rotate it, but if you can, in the case of point cloud, the whole 3D is defined with points. Like the games, uh, matching games, but in this case, uh, matching games are in 2D, these points are in 3D. And next comes the constructive model, like constructive solid geometry. It is like Lego blocks. Uh, I show you like this. Uh, these are based on Boolean operations. First, you have these two, and then these two are joined, a Boolean operation, and then this is joined up to here. Same goes for that part, and then this is subtracted from that uh, blue one, and we achieve the final part. So this is a constructive model. And next, but this is, you can say as boundary representation. We are only representing its boundary. So we have, and last category is non-manifold models. Yeah. It is a topological space that locally resembles a Euclidean space near each point. A surface is a two-dimensional manifold. It, it, it locally resembles the Euclidean plane near each point. So I show an example. For example, the surface of a globe can be described by a collection of planar maps, like the whole uh, globe is uh, a spherical form, but how we read the map in the planar form. So it is a whole surface of globe can be converted into a collection of maps. Next, I come to the decomposition models. As I have already explained, uh, voxel uh, and volume visualizations are. But uh, CT, uh, CT scan, uh, it uses X rays for uh, image generation, whereas MRI uses magnetic. Uh, uh, magnetic fields and radio frequency pulses to produce the detailed pictures. And next is the uh, next is the FTM, uh, cellular decomposition uh, and mesh, like we have uh, studied in our invited lecture in the case of Unity, the mesh generation. It belongs to small units and space subdivision and classification procedure black white and I explain them in the coming slide. So uh, I explain all three Ex uh, exhaustive enumeration represents a solid in three dimensional array like the A part. Uh, it is a combination of uh, uh, rectangular blocks. Each block either denotes a solid material or empty space. This approach is used for 3D volume transferring. And for the B part, uh, cellular decomposition, it is an example of that. Solid as a, it is a solid as a combination of irregular objects, which we call cell. And all cells are pasted together over common faces. One of the examples is FM, and the next is the space subdivision that represents solid as recursive subdivision. Like, and in that case, we have this we call it as an op tree because from every gray point, uh, there are eight. Uh, next point, and there are three types, white, black, and gray. So in the case of white 
or black, uh, uh, there is no uh, no continuation of the octree. Whereas whenever the point is gray, the octree is further subdivided into uh, either material or white spaces. And next, next is the this uh, this figure shows uh, how to deal with the data structure of octree. When uh, applied to solid modeling, octrees are typically constructed from solid primitives such as blocks, cylinders, and spheres. In the data structure, we only deal with uh, gray. This is a pseudocode, but we deal with white and black in a separate, separate code and gray in a separate code, like a filter. Now come to the constructive models. Uh, there are uh, constructive models for CSG in constructive, constructive for geometry. There are mainly uh, different types. How uh, based on the visualization, how how space models, CSG models, and there are different algorithms for CSG models. Uh, and ray casting is a method to see the model and next is tree manipulation and other algorithms for uh, CSG and the properties of CSG which I will explain. First is the half space model. So half space is basically a mathematical term which is based on the analytical functions. On this basis, more complex. Uh, uh, on the basis of half space, like in this example, there are two planar half spaces and uh, one one uh, cylindrical half space. So basically, in the interse intersection, which is a, 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 a common operation, Boolean operation, or we can say that it is a set operation. We apply that and we get the gray cylinder. So, but it is really difficult for us to understand. That is why we move to the CSG. CSG is very simple to understand as I have explained in an earlier slide. We have to reach to the depth to that model. So, we have to make a hole and the L block. So first we join two blocks to make an L block, then we remove a hole from that L block to reach that model. And next is recasting. Recasting is a natural approach to deal with the number of problems from CST. In ray casting, a view ray is sent from a location of viewer through each pixel of the image. And based on the location where the ray first hits the object being viewed, the shade and intensity of the pixel are calculated on the basis of the lighting model. By sending a Secondary rays from the look, uh, from the location of from the model. Special uh, effects such as transparency and uh, mirroring and shadowing can be generated. So ray casting is very important. Uh, you have experience in when you are modeling something. When you rotate it, uh, there are different shades in the model. And here is pseudo code for uh, implementation of recasting. Uh, recasting uh, implement compa uh, compactly on the basis of divide and conquer. Ideas to classify each tree against the CST tree. 
we look at the rays fit into subsets residing inside and outside the object. So these are the kind of filters. If then, if this operation exists, as you can switch to the following cases, and then the result. So next is ray classification or recursion of rays. Um, in this case, uh, there are two infinite lines which are denoted by out and one is finite line which is denoted by in. And the intersection of these produce the cylinder and um, at the, when these intersect, uh, there is a computational process and after that computation, uh, we see the final object. But uh, it is a special case. In general, rays may work like this. So the result of the classification concept consists of sequence of ray segments by sorting the ray segments with respect to ray parameter. The combination step is reduced to merging the sequences with Boolean operators. And those are the Boolean operators which you have seen. And next, I come to the boundary models. Uh, boundary models, uh, first, I will discuss the data structure and next the validity of the boundary model and construction and algorithms for boundary model and properties of the boundary model. So first, uh, what are the boundary models? Boundary models are those which are typically based on the boundary. So this is an example of a boundary model. So there can be three types of boundary models. One, one is polygon based boundary model. These are those models uh, for which all the faces of the model are plain. Next is vertex based model. In this case, uh, the vertices are shown in the data structure as many times as many times they come in the face of the model. And the last one is the edge based model. Edge based models are usually preferred and used uh, when all the uh, planes of the model are different, like circular surface and uh, conic surface like this. So, and this is uh, the example of vertex based model. As you can see that these are the faces and these are the vertices. And for phase one, we have V1, V2, V3, and V4. And V4 also appears in phase five. V4 and V3 also appear in phase four. And V2 and V3 appear in phase three. And V1 and V2 appear in phase two. So as many times as vertex exists in the model, it appears in the data structure. And next data structure is very complicated and it is wind edge data structure. So why it is so? It is, uh, uh, you can say it as edge based data structure. In this case, every edge and its uh, next edge are referenced and its two previous edges are referenced. And with every the edge, there is a, an associated face. So it also appears in the data structure. You can see that E1 and its associated faces, F1, F2, and its previous two edges, E4, E6, and next E5. So based on this data structure, you can look through each phase. 
That is why you do not have to specify all the edges with each face. You only specify one edge. So for one face, you go to that uh, EID, and then you find the corresponding edges. Uh, for next uh, thing, I should uh, explain more about topology and geometry. As Professor has already explained, topology is uh, the persistence of the corresponding uh, surface or are the uh, uh, environment, you can say, or neighboring information should remain the same. And geometry is the actual values of everything. So, here is uh, a topological map. Here we cannot see any, mm, any kind of distance information or coordinates, but we can have roughly idea uh, of the neighboring information. So we can see that it is a topological map. And next, it is also a map, but this time, it also has the information about the coordinates. It may be missing the very fine details, but you can, it can, uh, so it can also fall in the topology and geometry. Uh, why I explain uh, that cases uh, are because of this type of the constructed, constructed geometry. Uh, it is called uh, 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 the combination of uh, boundary and CST. Uh, you can use various type of local manipulations and this is a kind of sweep. You have uh, a sketch and you sweep it to some height like an extrude and then you can edit it manually like we can here it, uh, we have it you can say that it is negative side and it is the positive side but this kind of approach is uh, prone to errors that is why uh, uh, what we have seen up to now, CAD, uh, CAD systems do not allow us to operate like this. We have to sketch everything and then execute. And last point is about uh, Euler's Poincaré uh, formula or uh, the objects that are based on uh, Euler operations. And uh, one point is say that Euler, those objects which are based on Euler operation, they are always topologically valid. And I will explain for the Euler operations. Uh, there are different kinds of Euler operations. You can say it as a low level language, like a subject. Here on the left side, the operator, and the transition shows ones and zeros, and uh, at the last we have description. Description and operators are the acronyms like make M V F S means make vertex space solid. So V F S is one. So whenever it is with respect to make it is one and it is whenever it is with respect to kill it is minus one. And here is more information about them. Uh, here you can see that MEL means make edge loop. So from that you have reached to a loop. But PEL means 
till edge loop. So that one edge is removed. And MEV means make edge vertex. So an edge is generated with a vertex. So two vertices, one edge. But when you say kill edge vertex, one vertex, and edge is killed, and you are remained with only one vertex. And other examples follow them. So that's all for me. Good. Any question on this? Um, by this presentation? Okay. Okay.